criticism and all kinds of other defenses are much easier to hang on to than to face the facts that I'm talking to you, that I had to then face as the owner of this farm who wanted a diagnosis. The sort of thing, you know, that I started thinking was, jeez, I've got to give the land back. You know, these are ill-gotten gains. This is stolen goods, you know. I've come here with my family back, from so back to South Africa with this, you know, I want to give this to my children. You know, that's how it works. It's beautiful. I showed you. You know, I, I don't want to, it wasn't me who took the farm. <laughs> that happened 330 years ago, you know. It's, uh, and who am I going to give it to? Nico? You know, I find some symbolic bushman and say, you want a farm? You know, uh, well, uh, that doesn't seem right. And, and uh, you know, what must be carved up into seven bits so each family gets a piece? Well, can I keep a piece? <laughs> Um, you know, but you can't carve farms up. They're not farms anymore. What about food security? I honestly thought that. It was a wine farm. Yeah? These are called, where I come from, they're called <laughs> stories. <laughs> you know? It's excuses. It's bullshit. You know? it's, uh, and it's because you don't want to face the facts. The facts are what I've summarized for you about my farm, and it applies to all of those farms. So, you know, it's completely untenable. If you have a democracy, you know, where people are allowed to vote, as you've just noticed, they're allowed to vote a government in, you know, why would they vote in a government who says, that, no, they, the perpetrators of that history keep the rewards, you know? they, they keep the land? I mean, honestly, you know, sort of, I know I'm probably making some of you uncomfortable because, you know, it's uncomfortable making. It's like, geez, how can that work? You know, who would, why would anyone go along with that? In the wine industry, I think 98% of the land still belongs to whites. You know, so in the, where the trouble began with the taking of the Western Cape farmlands, you know, we still got it. And why would anybody allow it? So what do the farmers do? They sit with blinkers on. You know, they know that the shit's going to hit the fan, but they hope it's going to hit the fan after they die, or you know, to their children, or to the neighbor or something. You know? But it's completely, nobody in their right mind, if they face the facts, nobody in their right mind could think this can work that this can carry on, you know, you've got to do something about it. So there I was now facing the facts. And as I told you, what ca I came up with was the stories. And then eventually I thought, no, you've got to be honest. And now this is where those of you who still think I'm a nice guy are going to realize you're wrong. Because this is what happened. I faced the facts. This is why I'm saying there's psychological things here, impediments to land reform. Because what I eventually realized was it's not about, you know, it's not my fault and it happened so long ago and blah, 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 blah. It was very clear, we wanted a diagnosis, we got a diagnosis, it's all about who owns the land. And this is why we're in the sick situation that I described for you, and the solution is you've got to give the land back, that's the ethical thing to do, and I don't want to. That was what I realized. There's nothing about anything else, but I don't want to. I want to give it to my children. You know? So even though we collectively had been through this process, I mean, you know, you know how ashamed I now felt, and guilty, and awful, when you face the facts, that's what you should feel, you know, rather than, I hope it happens to my children or to the neighbor, you know, it's like, jeez, you know, uh, this is something I've really got to face, and what's central to it is my own bloody self-interest, you know, that I have to face that. I'm not this good guy coming back, you know, I'm, this is what the, re the real truth was. That's, you know, that's, you know I want to keep the ill-gotten gains and, and not look bad, not feel bad, but now I felt bad, and I still wanted to keep the farm. So now that's what I had to go and talk to the farm workers about. Now what are we going to do? I think that's what we as a country face you know, in terms of this question. But yeah, where was little farmer Mark? And he's got to go and talk to the people that have been through this diagnostic history taking about now what are we going to do? Because on the one hand, the right thing to do is to give the land back. And on the other hand, I don't want to do it. So what's so important about facing facts is it gives you your mind back. If you exclude half the evidence, because you don't like it, you know, it's still there, and it's going to have consequences. So now we're facing the facts, warts and all, and when you get your mind back, you can find solutions. And that's the single most important thing I want to say to you, you know, is that if you face the facts, you can find solutions. If you don't face the facts, you're going to get bitten in the <laughs> That's my business science uh, philosophy. <laughs> so um, I said, we, the farm workers and I discussed this, and they didn't find it so hard to understand that I didn't want to give the land back. It's not nice, but it's not understandable. So what else are we going to do? Because it's not right, you know. So the solution we came up with 
was, and I'm, I really need to end, with the solution we came up with. Oh, we built a museum. That's not the solution we came up with. <laughs> yes, the museum that tells the story of really what happened on my farm. And there's the plaques remembering each and every slave by name, because we did a most a piece of research to identify the slave. More than 200 souls built my farm. And you know how you find who they were? In wills, because they're left to your children. And in mortgage bonds, you could borrow against your slaves. That's where they get recorded, who they were, how old they were, where they're from. Yeah, anyway, so our aim was not to, um, was to, to record history, it was to change it. And so what did we do? This is Nico, this is young me, and there's my forest. My forest. Um, <laughs> You sort of feel a bit differently about it once you face the facts. And so what we decided was we got to, I want to keep my farm, but it's all about land ownership, so we've got to find some way in which we can somehow reconcile these two things. And what we did was we mortgaged my farm and took out a bank loan and formed a trust. The farm workers formed a, 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 were the beneficiaries of a trust, and then we bought the land next door, with, secured by my farm and the farm of a neighbor, this chap here, Richard. Richard Astor. Uh, he and I mortgaged our two farms, um, and we were able to, to uh, with, with loan funding, we were able to buy the farm next door to us, and now we have three farms. Farm workers have a farm, we keep our farms, and we've, now we have to make sure that the farm next door succeeds, because we're on the line for it. So my neighbor, a white guy, he shall remain nameless, but he's my neighbor, he came running across the road. You know, and he said, you think, look at the risk you're taking. You know? uh, think about your children. And I was truly flabbergasted you know, because, first of all, it's precisely because I was thinking about my children you know, that I was facing these facts rather than saying, I hope this hits the fan after I'm gone. And um, also, I wasn't taking on a risk. I was facing a risk. If you think the situation I've described is not a risk, you know, you're mad. So um, it was acknowledging a risk and managing a risk. But now I had to make sure that that farm succeeded. So that's a realistic basis for skills transfer. You know? So we formed a partnership. Uh, at, at that point, we formed a, th a three-way partnership, uh, each of us uh, holding 33% of the company that farms these three farms together. And each of us has a piece of land that is farmed, leased to the company, and farmed collectively. So we farm one farm, making one range of wines, and we each get uh, one third of, we each own one third of it, we each own one third of the land. And by the way, the, the farm next door is every bit as beautiful and as historic uh, as, as, as mine and Richard's farms.